What's going on, YouTube? Thanks for tapping in with your boy, Savage Studios. Much love, much respect, always on this side of town. So we got another Selly Homicide, Selly Nightmare. This one's a little different, man. Uh, first off, it didn't happen in general population. This kind of stuff cannot happen in general population for the simple fact they don't house homosexuals, transgenders, or anything of, the, of, the, of that nature in general population. Hey, so... They're in SNY. What else is in SNY? Dropout inmates. Inmates who are serving life sentences that no longer want to be a part of a gang, no longer want to be told what to do, no longer want to deal with politics. Hey, they drop out. Gang members who got themselves in the hat over dope debts, over politics, over a bad paperwork, whatever the case is, dropouts just flood the gates. And then you have those who just drop out because they ain't feeling any of what's going on on the general population yards. They're not with it. They don't like it. They'd rather be their own man, do their own time. Cool, whatever. COs have this crazy thing of thinking that because you drop out and go SNY, which they've coined uh, sensitive needs yard. And before that, it was just regular PC, protective custody. When you're over there, it's like you're supposed to be OK with taking a child molester for a celly, a rapist, a transgender, homosexual. And you can't ask questions. This is very flawed. This system, this this pattern that they developed a long time ago was done away with really quick. See, myself being a dropout, I was on SNY yards and I didn't have no problems dealing with transgenders or gays or homosexuals because the yards and the places I was at, you saw one, you saw a couple, you never saw a whole bunch of them. Now, did it happen on the level threes and the level twos? Yeah, of course, you know, that's where they frolic and have fun. They don't go to prison to... to necessarily bang you know they, they that's just their preference their lifestyle so they're more so on the lower levels as far as child molesters and stuff like that they don't want no they don't want no drama man they do end up on four yards because of the heinous level you know of their crime and they get dealt with real quick but here goes a case and i feel another setup because i know better you know when you go into a when you go into any unit, especially on a level four 180, when you walk into the the to the tundra, into your 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 pod, your block, in their office, the correctional officer's office, they have plenty of IDs of inmates all over this pin board, this wall, with colors co color coordinated. You know, they have everything set up because they know which inmates can take which inmates as cellies being compatible. Um. They disregard this, though, for certain reasons. If there's retaliation in mind, if it's somebody they want to get God, if there's a troubled inmate, they just want to they just want to make his day worse. They'll do something like throw a transgender or a homosexual inmate in there with a, with a openly homophobic inmate. And that was the case here with Miguel Crespo. And I want to say Carmen Guerrero. Um, it was a compaction done that should have never been done. Crespo was serving life since like 93 for, for shooting into a car, killing a man, injuring a woman. And he was openly homophobic. You know, he people drop out and they don't just let go of who they are morally. It's 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 nothing to get rid of, of, of an entity in your life that is oppressing you. So when someone drops out, let's say from uh, the suit or uh, the NF or any other big uh, organization, and they feel oppressed. They're not gonna. They're not gonna feel any type of way about just cutting ties with that. Now, it doesn't change the moral fabrics that are created that that a man has within him. It doesn't change that. That's the that's the thing that people get screwed up. You know, they blur those lines, and what happens and wh what the result is is always a death. It's always fatal. It's always homicide. Right? Who deals with the with the child molesters? S and Y inmates. The dropouts have to. And it is what it is. They die at a rate, and you can look this up. Child molesters die at a rate in the sensitive needs yards twice their own population in jail. That's how fast they get murked. They get killed off quick. Um, and and as far as homos and, uh, and the and the and the trans, they sell together. You know, they they live together. They sell together. They make sure to to just keep that on their own stuff. You know, and and they don't bother nobody. Um, <clears throat> So when a situation like this takes place, it's very unfortunate, you know, it's unfortunate for both parties. Um, Crespo, you know, he made it very clear and he made it so clear that when he when he went to court, 
He told the judge, I let them know I could not have a gay Sally, period. And that's that was his defense. Now, in California, California happens to be one out of the eight states that can't use that as a defense. Right. Other states, you actually can. You can't use that as a defense in California. So he got nowhere. He eventually got the death penalty for beating, bounding, gagging, torturing um, Carmen Guerrero. When the guard came to do the walk, Crespo gets on the door and is like, hey, and it's funny, man. I, I've literally seen this with my own eyes in a whole nother situation. But he goes up to the to the to the door and is like, hey, man, I murked my celly. You know, um, I'm, you're going to have a lot of work to do tonight because I murked my celly. And it's like, damn, like. The, imagine the guard, the guards, either the guard knew about it because he's coming on. He's like, hey, look, keep an eye. They're not dumb. They live with they live with us inmates. The correction officers live amongst us. So they're not dumb. They know everybody's living patterns, habits, history. They read our files. They know our paperwork. There's a reason why I never was given one, uh, anybody like that as a celly. And look, man, in prison, you got to go with the territory. So in prison, what it would have been like for me, if I could be honest with you guys, and it's just the way it is, you go, it, it's just the way it is. I would have been like, look, man, you're not coming in here. It's just as soon as I would have seen out of the door, like, look, I, don't come in here. Don't do that. You know, let the correction officer be mad at you. Let him write you up. Whatever it is that he's going to do to you, let him do it. But don't come up in the cell. Just don't do it. Now, if it would have been a child molester, I'm not going to say nothing. Come on. <laughs> come on in. Is it fortunate? Is it is it cool? Is it is it good? Nah, it's very unfortunate. And now that I'm a free man, I see how stupid it is. I see how ridiculous it is. But it is what it is. So uh, when the cop looks in, he sees uh, Carmen Guerrero on the top bunk, bound, tied up, and tortured. I don't know about y'all, man. If you can help me, I don't know how he tortured this inmate. I don't know. I don't know what he did. It doesn't explain anywhere exactly how he tortured. And I know y'all love the juicy details, man. But for some reason, it didn't. It just says tortured. Now, I don't know what classifies tortured. I don't know what warrants someone being tortured. I don't know. But when they say tortured, I'm thinking he was flipping nails back, slicing with razor blades, pulling hair out or something. You know what I mean? I don't know. But nonetheless, man, this is just another case of what I believe is a setup, man, because those moves don't happen, especially with somebody doing life. You could tell, homie, you know, used to be a Southsider, used to be a Sudanio, man. He dropped out. I was in Kern Valley when this happened. I had just, no, I was on my way to going to Cork and Shoe. So I was an ad seg at the time, which was B1 or B2 um, in the hole in Kern Valley on the level four. And I two killings. This killing happened when another killing happened. So when when this dude killed his celly, I heard, hey man, uh, 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 one of the one of the homies and shit, you know, he murked off his celly on D yard. Okay, boom. The next day, it was a, a ex football player who killed his celly in Kern Valley. Kern Valley was cracking, man. It, it, it was it, it was it was a hot spot for a good minute. It calmed down now. It calmed down a lot now. But that's just been one big no no. You don't mix, <clears throat> especially up on a high level like that. You just don't. That was on a 180, bro. Like, what, what are you what are you thinking? So in my opinion, in my honest opinion, it was an intentional, it was an intentional homicide. And you know what's crazy, guys? I just found out the other day. Somebody told me, man, that you know, he took some corrections classes or training, and that his instructor was actually using my videos to instruct and train uh, cadets more than their own books and whatnot. And, man, that, that had got me to thinking, man. It's like, okay, cool. Now, if we're not being biased and you're playing my videos, all of them, well, then, hey, man, I think this is, I think this is a great, a great thing. Because at first I didn't know how to, your boy didn't know how to feel about it. It's like, man, wait, hold on, man. They're using my, which is common sense, common knowledge. Anybody, even like these super active uh, Sureños out here on YouTube. It's like, calm down, homie. Your videos are being used just as well. 
Then I got to thinking, hold on. Show your cadets this. Show them about bad sell moves. Because this was a sell move from hell. This is a sell move you don't do. You don't compact incompatible people together, regardless if you're mad, regardless if you want to retaliate. Yo, I was at a dog pound, man. I told this story on my Instagram. It was so hilarious. I'm overhearing the owner tell his uh, partner, hey, uh, move C1 in there with C3. They should get along. <clears throat> now, he was talking about dogs <clears throat> and kennels. I literally had to stop what I was doing. I was carrying something. I look around at him and I start laughing, man. I was like, I'll be damned. It is just like housing inmates. There was absolutely spot on verbatim the words spoken that were spoken in prison. Move them in there with him. <clears throat> they should get along. A lot of people are taking chances. They're, they're making these moves based on the hope. And sometimes just based on retaliation. He'll kill him. He'll kill him. Eventually... The way the world is spinning, these officials, these correctional officers, these sergeants, lieutenants, people who okay these bed moves are going to go down. Jamie Osuna killing Nacelli, I think it's going to be one of the big, you know, the big cases. I think there's going to be a lawsuit won on that one. I think no matter what they say, you should not have put a Nacelli with that dude. And I was thinking about doing another video on Jamie as well, guys. Uh, push come to shove. He's a two-fiver. Um, I don't know who, exactly who made him into a two-fiver. He got made in Bakersfield County Jail where they have a whole pod full of them. They get validated over there in that county jail. The cops ask you as soon as you go in there, are you a two-fiver? They have them on the streets out there. So the two-five is real thick out there in Bakersfield. So push come to shove. When I found this out, I, I told one of the bros, like, hey, man, well, <clears throat> how the hell did that happen? You know, what the hell? And he says, yeah, yeah, man, you know, it happened from, from a lower level. And and no one's been able to get to him because he's been single cell this whole time. So the one celly they gave to him <clears throat> was the Paisa, uh, Luis Romero. And it didn't pan out too well for him. Now, he doesn't have rape. He doesn't have <clears throat> child molestation. He doesn't have an R. So is his paperwork clean? I've always wondered things like that, especially like in general population, <clears throat> the kind of things that they've allowed um, certain child endangerment cases. They don't care about domestic violence um, and you could kill a woman, you know, and, and, and there's certain there's certain loopholes in paperwork, man. It's like as long as you don't have the textbook charges that aren't OK, you'll be OK. But <clears throat> anyways, guys, yo, I just wanted to share this quick story with you, man. I thought it was crazy, man. You know, I was there in that prison at the time, tied up, bound, and tortured. His Sally, which was a transgender inmate, Carmen Guerrero. I'll include the picture on my thumbnail. Um, I'll include a link in my description as well. Check out the story. I couldn't get much details on the torture, but now old boy's in, on death row. And I'm pretty sure they prosecuted it as a hate crime. This is just another Sally nightmare that you don't want to find yourself in. I mean, hey, who knows what you guys would do? Maybe you start a relationship. Maybe you guys will be best friends. Maybe y'all be drinking coffee and laughing about some shit on TV at the end of the day. Or maybe you would end up just like Miguel Crespo, standing firm on some morals that you have that could be considered outdated or, I don't know, animalistic. But either way, nonetheless, what would you do if you found yourself in the position, you open the door, you got homies all over the tier, you got people watching you, you got a reputation, and look who walks in your cell. What you gonna do? Tap in with your boy next time. Always much love. Doses.